Sometimes it's best to just leave well enough alone. So The Many Saints of Newark is a prequel to the series The Sopranos and tells the story of Dickie Moltisanti as he leads his crime family during the 1967 Newark riots. What is up guys? Well, we have the official prequel movie to the very highly acclaimed Sopranos TV series upon us this weekend. It's in theaters as well as on HBO Max. To set the stage for my Sopranos fandom, this is actually one of those big shows that I have just missed. I've actually been watching the entire series over the past month or so, trying to get prepared for this movie. I'm still about 14 or 15 episodes away from finishing the series. As soon as I do that, I'm gonna do a ranking of all six seasons of The Sopranos. So if you're a fan of that show, definitely hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of that. But the trailer for this movie is what made me finally have enough oomph to watch this show. Of course, it's been praised all to hell. I know people that love this that still call it the best TV show of all time. And the trailer for this movie is what made me think this looks badass. This looks like an old school mob movie and I wanna be able to know what's going on here. So I need to watch all six seasons of this show so that I'm not in the dark when I finally watch what's hopefully going to be a kick-ass mob movie. So nonetheless, my expectations were pretty high for this. I've put a lot of time and energy preparing for this. I mean, for a two hour movie, I have watched uh, over a hundred hours of television at this point. So I was really looking forward to The Many Saints of Newark. Now, as far as what this movie does right, what this prequel does right, and you guys know, I'm not a big fan of prequels. I will say that it does capture that vibe of the show very well in a movie format. This doesn't feel like something that's foreign. It doesn't feel like something that wouldn't actually like stylistically lead into the show very well. And that's good because sometimes when you get prequels, you have a totally different creative team involved. They got a different approach, a different style, a different eye for the material. And visually, they just don't match up. Well, luckily you have people that were the heart and soul of the creative team of the show working on this movie. Movie. So as a stylistic, as a thematic, and as a visual through line, you could watch this movie and then immediately watch the show and it wouldn't feel like they are two completely different entities. I also thought that the movie was shot very well. I mean, this is set in the place of the 1960s, so the whole period piece aesthetic to it, I really like. I mean, whenever you go back to the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, there's always this really cool throwback aesthetic to it. And I thought that they captured that really well with the cars, with the music, with the clothing. And even during the actual riot section of this movie where Newark is quite literally on fire, I thought there was a lot of really cool shots where people are looking outside of their windows and seeing the city on in smoke and this kind of amber aura that's just going over New Jersey that kind of has this dark foreboding sense to it just in the visual side of things. And even during the violence and during some of the action scenes here, all of that is filmed very well as well. I mean, when you have a mobster movie, you gotta have some blood, you gotta have some heads exploding. And for a show that doesn't necessarily focus on that side of mobster stuff, it's a lot more of like a, about the conversations and about the family and about the character interactions, the movie does have a nice balance of giving what you would expect from The Sopranos, but also heightening up the violence a little bit for that two hour runtime. As far as acting, I think pretty much all the way around, and I'll get into why I said pretty much a little bit later on, pretty much all the way around, it was all really good. But I will say that the standout was absolutely Michael Gandolfini. Guys like me were brought up to follow codes. Hey, jerk off. What'd you say? What? Now, this guy had huge shoes to fill. I mean, this is a, a, a iconic character. This is an iconic actor that won Emmys. That I mean, this is the role that that actor was known for in James Gandolfini, and he's been in a lot of iconic movies. So filling in for his father was going to be something that most people would say is an impossible task. And I'm here to tell you, he does pretty damn good. I don't know what this kid's acting experience is. I don't think I've ever seen him before, but... Acting wise, he does very well. 
slipping into the role of a younger Tony Soprano, you believe it instantly. I mean, the mannerisms, the way that he talks, the way that he interacts with people, especially his mother, you can tell that this kid studied his father's performances on the show and tried his best to mimic it while also making it his own. So, I mean, I, if they do anything outside of Newark, outside of the many saints of Newark, and we just see more of the young Tony Soprano, I don't want to see it unless this kid comes back because every time he was on screen, I was glued. And somewhat going along with what I just said, I think that the way that they recasted all of these roles, pretty much <laughs> all the way around, they did a pretty damn good job. I mean, with the exception of one or two characters that I'll get into, the casting that they decided to go for for all of these really famous roles, I thought they did damn good. Not only for just the performances and the mannerisms and the dialogue and making you feel like that actually is that character, but the look as well, which sometimes can be very jarring. If you're so used to watching, I mean, six seasons of a show and having an image in your head of what a character is supposed to look like, and then all of a sudden you're supposed to believe a completely different actor is now that character, it's really important for them to really nail that role and pretty much everybody in this movie does a damn good job with that. One of the standouts, Corey Stoll as Uncle Junior, I thought he was perfect for that role. Not only in the look, but just in his attitude, the way that he interacts with people, he has that kind of bitchy cantankerousness to him that we all love Uncle Junior for. They did a damn good job. I mean, Michael Gandalfini is the standout, but everybody else pretty much all the way around looks just like a younger version of that character. You believe it instantly. Moving on to the mixed aspect of this movie, for me, it is the references, the winks and nods, the callbacks to the actual show, The Sopranos. Now, there is moments in here that I thought was awesome. There's actually a flashback sequence that was in like the first or second season of the show that they completely recreate here with their newer actors. And if you've never seen the show, you don't think anything of it. But if you watch the show, whenever they start getting into this little flashback sequence with this carnival where uh, Tony Soprano's father is getting arrested and you're like, holy shit, that was from the show. They recreated this like almost shot for shot. That's really cool. There's moments like that that's awesome. And there's moments of dialogue calling back to, well, I guess calling forward to events of the, what The Sopranos is gonna do that was also cool. But the problem is, I feel like they rely too much on that side of things to sell this movie and to, to get people to enjoy this movie. Like, I honestly don't believe that anybody that has not seen The Sopranos would think anything above like average on this film because everything that is heightened above mob movies that we have all seen a dozen times is all just these little callbacks to the show that kind of makes you warm your heart a little bit if you're a hardcore fan and you've been dying for The Sopranos or even for somebody like me that's brand new to it is just something where it's so fresh in my memory I'm like oh that was cool that was creative but that shouldn't be what you lean on with a movie. So with that being said getting into the negatives unfortunately I think that this is a painfully mediocre mob movie. There is absolutely nothing in this movie that I have not seen done a dozen times in other mob films and done better. I mean, you have decades of this subgenre, even your own show to learn from, and it just felt like they didn't have anything new to say, anything new to show you. It was just kind of like, hey guys, remember The Sopranos? All right, see you later. And that was kind of the whole point of the movie, and that really bummed me out. I mean, as soon as I got to the end of the film, and I woke up this morning, the theme of the show started to slowly come in and I was like, is this really the end of the movie? Are you serious? And then as soon as I saw credits, I was like, really? That's it? I mean, turmoil amongst families, we've seen that. Racial relations amongst different gangs, we've seen that. Riots and, and period piece recreation, we've seen that. Most of the things that these characters that are actually from the show are giving you here are just portion-sized samples of what they've done in the show already, so we've all seen that. I mean, the only thing new that this prequel gave us is the character of Dickie Maltasanti and answering the question of who killed Dickie Maltasanti because it's just kind of hinted at throughout the series, and it's not like even a major part. It's just like this little hint, this little lingering question that we all had at the end of that series. They give you that that's new, but even the character of Dickie Maltasanti, as well as the answer of who killed Dickie, is not really all that compelling. I mean, this guy is just a kind of generic mob character. There's nothing about him, aside from seeing where Christopher gets some of his, uh, his angst from, 
that really compels you or really makes you draw it into this character. I mean, there's just nothing about him where you're like, why is this guy so compelling? Why is this guy like the, the origin of all of this? And like I said, they don't even make the, the whole killing of Dicky Maltasanti, which is not a spoiler. If you've seen the show, you know it's coming. The answer to that question is just like, okay, here's the guy who did it. And you don't even really fully understand why. I mean, there's like a comedic reason why maybe, maybe that you can kind of put two and two together, but that's not worth a two hour film to just answer that question with that answer. And part of the problem here is that you have so many things that they're trying to do in this movie as far as introduce and wrap up the character of Dickie Maltasanti, show his relationship to Tony Soprano and how that might have led to him becoming the boss of New Jersey, introduce all these other characters that came into the Soprano show in various ways to varying quality, also talk about race relations in the 60s, also talk about the actual historic riots of Newark, New Jersey, set up things that maybe we didn't know was going to happen that might follow up in a couple more movies, who knows if they're gonna have success enough to do that. So many things that they're trying to do within a two hour movie that by the end, by the time the credits roll, this feels like what should have been the pilot of a miniseries, and we don't have the next episode to click on. So all the things that they bring up in this movie are now left lingering. The one question that they answer, they don't answer very well, and now you kind of want more, you kind of want to know a little bit more about this era, especially the young Tony Soprano, but we don't have that, and I don't know if we're going to get it. And as far as young Tony Soprano, they have been marketing the shit out of this movie. I mean, literally on the posters, it says, who made Tony Soprano? They're selling you off of that premise of this is why Tony became Tony. You can't prove it by me. He's got a D plus average. Well, he doesn't apply himself, but he is smart. The results tell us. He's a leader. That portion of this movie is maybe 10% of the plot. And it's the most compelling side of the plot. So whenever you get to that section of the movie where teenage Tony Soprano's hung, hanging out with Uncle Dickie and starting to accept stolen property and he's starting to, you know, steal ice cream trucks and shit like that. And you're like, this is what I came for. This is what I signed up for. But that's this much of the movie. Everything else is just hey, here's this guy Dickie that you're going to forget about as soon as the credits roll. Now, as far as acting performances and uh, casting that I didn't think was really on par, acting performance wise, the guy that they cast as Sil, Silvio, I thought that he was kind of like a joke. I thought that he felt like somebody that was trying to do almost like a parody of the character. I mean, Silvio is a guy that, you know, he's got this big flamboyant fake Italian hair and He's always talking like this and like he's he's a very over the top character if you do him wrong and they did him wrong here. As far as casting, I love John Bernthal and I am not upset that he was in this movie, but he looks absolutely nothing like Tony Soprano's father, who is a character that we have seen four or five times in the series in flashbacks. Everybody else is so damn near perfect with the visual recreations of those characters and the voices and the mannerisms and the dialect that he stood out like a sore thumb to the point where it took half an hour in the movie to where I'm like, did he have another father? Is there another guy coming in at some point? Cause that ain't him. And finally, I think that they really dropped the ball on making this movie appealing to those that have not seen The Sopranos yet. I mean, The Sopranos is something that is starting to get a little bit more momentum now. I mean, we've had COVID, people are starting to rediscover shows, people are starting to discover shows that they've never seen before. People like me starting to actually put forth the effort to watch this show that they just never done before. So you have a lot of new Sopranos fans coming and one of the, the reasons they should have made this movie was to get even more people into that camp to where they watch this, they go, damn, that was really cool. Now I wanna watch The Sopranos. And I don't think they did that at all because if you do not have knowledge of The Sopranos, of the events of the show, of the characters, not only does this movie ruin some of the events for you by just flat out telling you in the first five minutes a major character death, but that has no meat on its bones whatsoever if you don't recognize the little references and the winks and the characters, it's just very bare bones, generic mob stuff. I would be hard pressed 
to find one person that has no knowledge of The Sopranos that watches this movie that instantly thinks, now I wanna watch The Sopranos. So overall guys, I was extremely underwhelmed and disappointed by this movie. I don't think that it's terrible. I think that it's passable. If you're somebody that loves mob stuff, you could probably watch this and have an okay time with it. But I don't think mob fans are gonna think all that much of this movie. And I don't even think Sopranos fans are gonna think all that much of this movie. It just feels like a lesser episode of the TV show, but we have no second episode to click on. So I'm just left kind of lingering now. So if you're not already a fan of The Sopranos, I don't think you need to watch this. I don't think you're gonna get anything out of it. If you are a Sopranos fanatic, check this out, but don't have high expectations and certainly don't go out and spend a bunch of money in the theaters. Check this thing out on HBO Max this weekend and stream it. So what do you guys think of The Many Saints of Newark? Was this the big, badass movie that you have been waiting for for, what, over a decade now since The Sopranos ended with that cut to black? Or is this just a gigantic disappointment and you're sitting there going, ugh, what was the point of this? Let me know your thoughts down below, guys, and we will talk about it. Like I said, keep your eyes peeled for that Sopranos ranking. I was hoping to do it tomorrow, but I have not had the time to finish the series, so it's gonna be within the next week, but keep your eyes peeled. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you do not miss that. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be doing a live stream, me and CP. We're gonna talk about spoilers for Venom. We're gonna talk about spoilers for Many Saints of Newark. Might talk about Adam's Family too, although I don't think anybody cares about that. And I'm also gonna to try to watch The Guilty, the new Netflix movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. So we're gonna be talking about all the new releases. Be sure to check that out tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.